So while I'm here, I have to tell you the story of the bullwhip kelp. One time when I was living in uh, Utah, right around this time of year, winter time, around uh, Christmas, New Year's time, I came out to the coast here and I found a bullwhip kelp that I just liked so much that I had to tie it onto the top of my car. And I tied it onto the top of my car and I took it all the way back to Utah, but unfortunately, on the way it froze, it froze solid. So when I got it to Utah, it was just this massive piece of ice. And then um, a week or two later, when we had a thought, thawed out, thawed out, and it just turned into a massive piece of mush. Why did I take a bullwhip kelp like this and tie it to the top of my car? Anyone's guess. All right, well, anyway, I'm here to talk about um, XSL um, extensions and versions. So you'll see when you uh, start a new transform in oxygen, it'll ask you, what version of XSL do you want to use? XSL 1.0 or XSL 2.0? Um, I've pretty much for the purposes of just using oxygen would, uh, would steer you towards XSL 2.0 and you'll see a little bit later in the course when we start to talk about um, uh, building multiple files from the same XSL transform that XSL 2.0 is what you have to use because it's the only one who has commands for doing that sort of thing. The two big new changes in XSL 2.0 that I think are really worth using it for. One is what I just mentioned, the ability to build multiple files from the same transform. So you can literally say, well, I want all this stuff from this part of the transform to go into file A, all this stuff from this part of the transform to go into file B, and, um, uh, and you have that ability in XSL 2.0, which you don't in XSL 1.0. Um, the other thing you have the ability to do, which won't come up in this class, is uh, more sophisticated grouping. So oftentimes you have a set of elements and you want to group by, for example, they have different types. Type A, type B, type C, type D. And you want all the type A's to come out with a little header that says type A and then all the items under it type B, all the items under it type C, all the items under it. That's really difficult to do. There's some kludges in XSL 1.0 for doing that, but XSL 2.0 is much better at that and is much, um, uh, basically does it very naturally. Big extension. Lots of new functions, um, stuff like that, but those are the two big ones. Now, the main problem with XSL 2.0 is that it's not very well supported, unfortunately. Uh, Microsoft, for example, um, hasn't supported it for years and years, and, and as, of this, as of this recording, still isn't supporting it. Um, there's uh, some Saxon parsers that, that will support it, and you'll see inside of, the, um, inside of your uh, Oxygen uh, IDE, that you can change the parser, and when you change the parser, it'll allow you to, um, to transform XSL 2.0 files. Um, so that's XSL 1.0 versus 2.0. The summary is 2.0 has new features. I would more or less move towards 2.0, um, except for the fact that it's not always supported in application software. It's fully supported in Oxygen, so if you're just working in Oxygen, it's fine to work in XSL 2.0. That's, that's, that's just fine. So how do you do it? The only difference is when you're transforming, and it asks you to, uh, it asks you to choose, uh, uh, well, when, when you're setting up a transformation scenario, which other topics that I've talked about will cover, um, and you want to use XSL 2.0, you choose one of the Saxon 9.xxx parsers. So there's a little place in there where it says, wh what parser do you want to use in order to interpret your XSL, excuse me, not X, uh, parser, what interpreter do you want to use to interpret your XSL and run the XSL transform? And you choose one of the Saxon 9 dot, and then there are a few different ones. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. 9 dot or whatever will be a 2.0 transform. The other thing is when you create the transform, it'll ask you whether you want it to be 1.0 or 2.0. You say, I want it to be 2.0. And that's it. That's, how, that's the difference between 1.0 and 2.0. Feel free to use either one. In this class, for the most part, it's not really going to matter which one you use because I don't really evaluate you on any of those unless you're in the in-class option and you're doing a project and you've chosen to do um, multiple pages from one transform, that's the only place in this class, at the moment anyway, that you'll come across the need for 2.0. Okay, then there's the uh, XSL versus XSLT. And for the life of me, I can't understand why they needed to put the T on there. We got XSD, XS, XML, and XSL. A trio, all three letter acronyms, all perfectly descriptive of what they do, but somewhere along the line someone decided there was a difference between extensible style sheet language and extensible style sheet language transforms, which for the life of me I've never figured out what the difference is or why you would care to name them differently. So my perspective on that issue is 
uh, name your files XSL, name them XSLT, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to change anything. I use XSL because it's nice and, um, and symmetric with XML and uh, XSD. And so I, you know, I would, I would uh, recommend that, but it really doesn't matter, and maybe someday someone will come along and tell me why I need to use one extension versus the other. But as far as I'm concerned, XSL and XSLT are exactly the same. XSL 1.0 and XSL 2.0, for the most part for you in this class, are also going to be the same, so it doesn't matter much what you use, but as you get into more advanced um, functionality, you may want to move over to 2.0, and you may want to remember that not all uh, development environments will support XSL 2.0, at least not now.